Proper connecting rod selection is one of the most important decisions you can make when building an engine. Connecting rods not only affect how your engine fits together, they also play a role in engine performance and longevity. Hey, Dave here, and in this video we're going to cover the five key factors that play a role in choosing the right connecting rods for your application. Aftermarket connecting rods come in various designs, materials, and lengths. Picking the right combination will ultimately come down to these five key factors. Engine performance or output, as in horsepower, torque, and RPM range. Engine dimensions, this includes piston height and crankshaft stroke. Application, street, drag race, endurance racing, etc. Piston weight, and then your budget. All of these factors will help determine the rod length, material, and configuration that's best for your application. Before we get into the design elements of aftermarket connecting rods, it's important to understand the types of stresses they're likely to encounter. Large amount of torque, for example, will yield heavy compression and bending loads on the rods. High RPMs, on the other hand, cause mostly tensile loading or stretching forces. In most cases, connecting rods don't fail on the compression stroke, rather they break apart on the exhaust stroke at high RPM operation due to tensile loading. With that in mind, let's start with the physical design of the rods. Specifically, let's look at H-beam versus I-beam, as these are the most common designs. Now, stock I-beam connecting rods can typically handle upwards of 400 horsepower and 6,500 RPM. Once you exceed those performance levels, you'll need to consider aftermarket connecting rods. Depending on the type of material used, aftermarket I-beams can handle hefty compressive loads, offer good tensile strength, and are often more lightweight than H-beams. H-beam connecting rods use a completely different design to increase stiffness and strength. They incorporate two large flat sides with a thin section in the middle. This design makes these rods more rigid and able to handle compressive forces, however they are often more expensive. I-beam rods are easier to produce and can sometimes be lighter than H-beams. All other variables being equal, H-beam rods are the strongest design. So what about connecting rod materials? The three main materials used in connecting rods are steel, aluminum, or titanium. Most aftermarket steel connecting rods are made from forged steel. However, there are different types of forged steel based on the grade of material. Eagle Specialties, for example, uses a 5140 steel for its entry-level rods. For more highly modified competition applications, most manufacturers, including Eagle Specialties, utilize high carbon 4340 or 4330 steel. Aluminum rods could be as much as 25% lighter than steel rods, making them a popular choice with racers. The lighter weight reduces the overall mass of the reciprocating assembly, allowing the engine to rev faster and higher. The downside to aluminum rods is their fatigue life. They can begin to stretch, especially when they've made many passes down the drag strip. However, a good set of aluminum rods can last up to 100,000 miles in street applications. So it really comes down to your application and your budget. A third option is titanium. Titanium connecting rods combine the lighter weight of aluminum with a strength that's more comparable to steel. That makes them a viable option for drag cars or sprint cars that require quick throttle response. However, they're very expensive. Of course, no talk about connecting rods is complete without determining rod length and rod ratio. We'll include a link to a chart with some common stock connecting rod lengths below. Rod ratio, though, is the length of a connecting rod center to center divided by the stroke of the crankshaft. This number can have a direct effect on power, torque, engine efficiency, and piston wear. As a general rule of thumb, lower rod ratios are associated with lower RPM engines. Higher rod ratios typically work with high revving, high RPM engines. Generally speaking, the rod ratio for gasoline-based automotive engines operating in a typical RPM range will be about 1.45 to 1 to 1.7 to 1, with some race engines up to 2.1 to 1. Most connecting rod manufacturers agree that rod length and rod ratio selections be part of a larger equation. The length of the rod has an effect on the dwell time of the piston at top dead center. In cases where the stroke is short enough to allow some flexibility in rod selection, it can be factored in with port flow, valve timing, and RPM range to optimize the engine for a specific application. Here are a few other things to consider when choosing connecting rods. First, pay attention to any special treatments used on the rods. Make sure the rods have been heat treated, which is required for a material to meet most SAE ASTM specifications. There are other treatments too that can help with the strength of the material used, including shot peening, polishing, and cryo treatment. 
Second, it's imperative that you pay attention to the connecting rod bolts when you purchase and install your new connecting rods. These bolts are the single highest stress fastener in your engine, and inferior bolts are particularly prone to failure under high tensile loads. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions for tightening, lubrication, and care. Finally, what type of wrist pin do you want? Full floating and press fit are your options here. Press fit pin style rods require heat for installation, while floating pins can be installed without special tools. Just a special clip ring or spiral lock is required. Most aftermarket manufacturers have gone to a floating wrist pin design, and these make for easy disassembly if necessary. Remember, the right combination of rod material, size, style, and hardware will ensure maximum performance and reliability from your engine. We've got connecting rods from dozens of the top manufacturers, and we're ready to help you with your buying decision. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more great Summit Racing videos.